In the British Museum in London, there stands a great dark stone, it's younger than the pyramids, but older than Caesar's Rome. Carved on its flat surface, three different scripts are shown, a decree from 196 BC when Ptolemy V was on the throne. It's written first in hieroglyphs and the demotic script they wrote, and also in the ancient Greek that Egypt's rulers spoke. Later in 5th century Egypt, with hieroglyphs no longer taught, the Rosetta Stone was broken up and built into a fort. Later still, Napoleon's French army, invading Egypt at the time, found the stone in a ruined wall in 1799. The British quickly threw them out and the stone got shipped to Britain, where they distributed lithographs to show how the script was written. Lots of people claimed to have deciphered hieroglyphics, but the Greek text on this ancient stone proved them wrong in all specifics. Thomas Young looked at some words and circled within rings and realised that they were names of important folk like kings. He could see the name of Ptolemy in the Greek text and he found it matched encircled hieroglyphs, so he worked out how they'd sound. But it only worked for foreign names, or so he thought, and all agreed, that hieroglyphs were picture words, like characters in Chinese. Then Jean-Francois Champollion, in his polyglot research, learnt the sacred language of Egypt's Coptic Christian church. Ra was a Coptic name for sun, and Champollion thought, what if? It was also the sound Egyptians used for a sun-like hieroglyph. Sometimes he saw they'd show a vowel, and oftentimes they dropped it, but in amongst the consonants was a language just like Coptic. Some hieroglyphs are images of the things they represent, others are just single sounds like in our alphabet. Thanks to the Rosetta Stone, we can easily decrypt and read the sacred hieroglyphs on the stones from ancient Egypt. So we know that those Egyptians were people just like us, although morbidly obsessed with death about which they made a great big fuss.